I never they drove through there. I never I just don't even I don't think I have problems they drive through it. I just don't pay attention. Yeah. And so when I flipped around I was like I hadn't seen any number in Well it was more like it was because I never didn't seen come from us. So didn't come from our right. not from our our storage facility. All right. But, uh, and I was like, I don't know I've never seen a car on this. So I've worn them before. They usually have numbers on them, so you can identify the accounts with the president. Oh, that's actually a smart idea. Because they don't have enough. Yeah. And his answer is like, that was a good answer. I got a chuckle on it. Because I was listening to the story. They just lived there. She's like, don't you guys have a number? I'm like, yes. Yeah. Every council has a number. So, uh, uh, yeah, last so, Sunday I was on the Gulf War Rating team. And we got, uh, we got uh, a interest in for the company. I don't know if I can ever go to a game again and sit in the conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. Especially ruined. when it's cold out. Oh, it There's nice and warm in yeah. there. It was and pouring, yeah. and we had a roof. Oh, yeah, you had yeah. the weather on. So, yeah. yeah. So we had a heater outside. Like, you can go outside mm -hmm. through the cupboard, yeah. and there's a heater out there, and then you go inside. It was perfect. Yeah. Right. Free drinks, free food. Yeah. I've done the box at uh, uh, the like a Cavs game and a Redskins game. And it, it, you're right. It's just like, yeah, you just can't go back. Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. It's been like a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And like, you can watch it too. Like, there was one fan in the ground. There was like, this was like, <laughs> like yeah. you can tell you the ball's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. We've been doing a little bit of that this evening. I'll have to tell you I'm Yeah, I don't ever go back to a normal seat. You probably will, but it won't be the same. Sorry, I got to go back to the seat. Yeah, I know. We've been doing a little bit of that this evening. I'll have to tell you I'm going to put that on the website, but if you care. They got the parking. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Parking situation. Yeah, right by the door. Like, Everything's hooked up. Yeah. Everybody's rent. We're walking out. Perfectly dry. It was like. People like. Mm. Get to the car. Two things I haven't done that I want to do in a similar vein, but just for the sports entertainment value. Did you play like, a car? Feet on the floor. And I did. Well, They're beside Ben. And, uh, They're inside the packet. So I'm a. Uh, like sitting in those Lexus level seats right. where I have home plate. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. it. Gotcha. That's what I was writing because I didn't get it when I ever did one. No one did. That was my fault. <laughs> she just a little no problem. Mm -hmm. Hang tight for a couple minutes here. Speaking of caps uh, seats, I, I used to have seats in the old cap center. When, when they were third row seats, and I think they were sixty dollars yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the blue line. Yeah. Can't get get it for no. those rates these days. Yeah. I think you get. I don't know, you can probably get a red seat for sixty bucks. Yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. 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 I think they may pay you 60 bucks. Yeah. I know, I heard something that was just game of blood, you got a ticket to go to the Yeah, yeah they were doing that. Yeah. When they raised it to 90, that's when we said that's too much, and now that would be a bargain. I was going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is, that was $60 per season? Uh, for, well, no, just $60 per seat, so it was 120 a game. Okay. So I think for third row, but, but, but that's right on the ice. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they would cost. To yeah, yeah. The that's there's a couple of police officers around here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Kim, Kim's not here yet. She's here. She's just. She's walking over. Yeah, tied up. It's a big part. Yeah, we need to put like a thing that they have at the airport. One of those uh, tread like. Walkways. I, I recently did the, the new underground where they connected the Silver Line at Dulles from the parking garage. So you can go all you can go from the parking garage underground all the way to the terminal. Really? It's a long way, but like that would be nice because it's all covered. It's air conditioned, heated, whatever. And there's those moving walkways 
hundred. Are they getting rid of the tram cars? The the big. They're not. The people movers are still there. This was actually can just get you from the garage over to the terminal, but they still do the people movers from the like the far from the terminal. <coughs> so you're producing the minutes, right? They go to our yeah. They produce them in front of them when actually the actors are taking notes. They're but like, but I'm not people mover crashes. Yeah, yeah. I recorded I that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm always sort of wondering, like, how fast are those things going? It's hard to get a feel for, because you're way up a high. Like, yeah. Am I going 15 miles an hour, 30, 50? I don't have no idea. Like, no idea. It's like, what like, is the price of the parking to fill this? It was, like, it was like 40. I, we parked in one of the closer garages. It was like 40 a day, I think. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that's okay. I'm never parking. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. How about the best you're going out there? It's going to take you like an hour. Yeah. I know. Especially here. Yeah. I'd rather fly to Reagan and then like transfer out of JFK or something if I fly long distance. I don't know. Yeah. So this is a nightmare. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this whole new one terminal for security check down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good? For, for Reagan? Yeah, they're doing oh. a huge construction project down there to make one security terminal. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets sh basically cattle shoot <coughs> on the spot. That, that sounds like a nightmare. That's what I said. That's great yeah. because we don't have to wait in one security line. Well, the problem is, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be because everybody's now at one spot. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about why are they, this is like a don't fix it if it's not broke yeah. situation. Yeah. What's the spot? I don't know. Are paying double, I guess? Thank you all for coming to the Trespass Towing Advisory Board meeting of 2019. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself, Caitlin Thomas, and this is Ben Aiken. We are your staff coordinators now, since uh, Mr. Stout has left. And so you'll have to forgive us if we um, stumble or if this is a little bit muddy at all. So, but we're going to try to get through the meeting. Um, and I just wanted to go ahead and if we could introduce ourselves, go around the room. Let's start with Ty. Ty Reynolds, Community Tony. Jeff with Accurate Tony. Jim Chewy with the Police Department, Act Inspector. Amber Gottlich, Random Arlington uh, resident <laughs> who thought more people might show up <laughs> that were not already included, so have been towed. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Kim Jones, uh, Police Department. Ben Aiken, Director of Constituent Services and um, Co liaison to this board. <clears throat> John O'Neill, Advanced Towing. Mike Reynolds, former owner of Advanced Towing. Joe Kennedy, Citizen. Uh, Matt Chisty, um, TTAP member. Well, thank you all. Thank you, um, members, for serving and for non members for attending. So, mm -hmm. here I just wanted to go ahead and I'm going to read the charge and the scope of the board just to refresh everyone's um, memory and for those who have never been here before. So the charge, the TTAB shall review the current ordinance and any provisions recommended for amendments to the ordinance and provide input and recommendation for the county board's consideration. The TTAB shall meet at least once per year at the call of the chair. And the purpose of the advisory board meeting is for the TTAB to receive a report from county staff on the public comments received. The TTAB will also consider any and all amendments to the towing ordinance and vote on final recommendations to be made to the Arlington County Board. And at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our Madam Chair, Kim, and let you lead the election. My, my time was, uh, was for a year, and that time is now up, so it is now time for me to pass it on to the next person, who is... It would be me. Who would be him. So, 
I <laughs> vote to you. <laughs> Do we have a motion? A motion to. Uh, By default, he becomes the chairman anyway. Right, yes. right. I mean, I'll make the motion of making the chairman choice. Just wanted to go through the I'll motion, not the motion. Oh. <laughs> Second. Great. Any opposed? Looks like you're the chair and the meeting is yours. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you're the Go ahead. <laughs> Um, okay, so we want to approve the agenda first. Was that the, yes. the thinking here? So I guess, uh, first of all, again, everyone, thanks for coming. I think we, we know why I'm the default chairman. Um, the law was changed a couple years ago to rotate between um, the three constituents that are represented here. So there's the police force, the towing community, and the resident, uh, a resident member of the board. Um, the board is not equally representative of the residents, um, so I was the last one to finally get it by default because um, Mr. O'Neill was elected first and then the police officer were elected last year. So uh, that's why there, there wasn't much, uh, much debate for that. Um, for the agenda, I guess we'll just um, start with a couple of things. You've got them all in front of you. Um, I think we're gonna review the ordinance changes first, um, which are, um, the state has proposed a couple of ordinance changes, and thanks to what's called the Dillon Law, we have to comply, or we have to do what the state, uh, like the state takes precedence over our, um, our local code. So a lot of times we, well, we have to defer to what, what is written in the state code, and I think that that's what we're gonna do now, is review what changes have been made to the state code. Right. Okay. Um, so basically the, what has changed is the fee. Um, and so now localities in it's 46 point due dash 1233 and this was changed as of 2019 in July localities in planning district 8 and planning district 16 we are 8 shall establish by ordinance a hookup and initial towing fee of no less than 135 and no more than a maximum charge is provided in 46.2 dash 1233.1 which is 150 for everyone's um, knowledge and for a towing a vehicle between 7 p.m. and 8 a.m. on or any Saturday, Sunday, or holiday, an additional fee of $25 per instance. However, such ordinance shall also provide that in no event shall more than two such additional fees be charged for towing any vehicle. So essentially, they have allowed, they have enabled our um, planning district to increase the, the minimum, the maximum fee. He mentioned the Does everyone as well, didn't you? I'm sorry? Can you mention a minimum as well? Yes, yes the so, minimum of no less than 135. So a raise, basically. No, we'll, we'll get to that in um, okay. some unfinished, I think in the unfinished business and then in new business, we can potentially bring it up again. Um, but basically, during last year's meeting, there's a proposal to raise the rate um, to 150, and the county had said, we don't have the authorization because, again, the state law has uh, precedence. So I believe, John, you mentioned, okay, I'll just go to Richmond and get it changed. So I do, it was uh, one word. Uh, <laughs> it, it was one word that enabled the county to allow us to, to raise the fee up to 150, while the rest of the state was allowed to raise it to 150, plan district 8, and 16 could not. But that one word was removed. Gotcha. So, so basically now the state law says a minimum of 135, and we're authorized to go up to 150. Um, we can discuss that, but I think that summarizes the, the main change, right? Right. Uh, did anyone have any talking points or anything about the that? I mean, I think we'll get to the, the rate issue in a moment. Like, no, no comments. All right, we'll, we'll get to it later. Yeah, yeah, we'll come up to it in a moment. Uh, the next agenda item: uh, Arlington County publishes all of the uh, complaints, or at least a summary of the complaints, which you'll find on the last pages of this packet. Uh, generally speaking, you know, most of the times, more often than not. Um, the, the tow was a, a legitimate tow. Um, there's usually you know, no parking permit display. Um, there's only, what do I count about, three or four that were um, in violation of the county code. So uh, do we want to even address this? I mean, there's, there's not much. Do you want to make any comments on the, on the, the complaint data? Were there any specific complaints that were, uh, that were relevant to the board here? Well, can I make a comment? I don't have any. Okay. Sorry for this. I do not. Some police officers um, pulled over a car in my neighborhood the other day, and there were three of them, 
and I don't know why they pulled the person over. They didn't arrest or detain the person, but they ended up towing his car. And they went through what seemed like a lot of paperwork and justification to justify the towing of the car. Well, I think we're, for that particular story, I mean, this is the Trespass Towing Advisory Board. So I, I, I think that's kind of out of the scope that's of the police and that the tow is completely Yeah, the police, I, I think you can speak to that, that particular yeah. point, right? The In other words, they need to be made accountable. Yeah, that's okay, I'm done. Yeah, police tows are not part of this type of stuff. Yeah, I think they're, there's actually yeah a completely separate. I don't think there's an advisory board on that, but that's yeah, uh, there is. enforcement. That's is there a separate yeah. one on that? I'm just saying <laughs> they're held accountable. Understood. As all should be. I'm so Agreed. sorry. Just curious. So a complaint was filed with the county code. Who deemed that the complaint allegation was legitimate? That would be me. <laughs> so if I would have filed a complaint because I, I did get towed. And they said I didn't have proper permits showing. However, I've lived there for six years. I've had every permit that we've ever had showing on my car. Um, my apartment complex reimbursed me, but had I made a complaint with the county, you would have come and investigated? Yes. Okay. There is a, a section on enforcement that we'll, we'll talk about later. I and mean, a lot of okay. what, we're, what we've dealt with in the board is, is people that aren't aware, or residents that aren't aware of the mechanisms to go and, and file a complaint. Yes. So a couple years ago, we actually changed the code that now on the ticket, on the receipt itself, you have the website and the email address to contact, like when you pick up the receipt. So it's posted at a lot. It's the first thing you hit on a Google search. Uh, to make, you know, if you type in towing on it, the first thing that pops up is how to make a complaint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, luckily I got rid of it. It's only a towing receipt. And yes, we'll speak right. specifically back to, to enforcement in a, in a, um, later in the new business section. Okay. I was just wondering how they deemed that. <clears throat> um, now, these were brought in compliance, right? I think generally, I. I Defer to the hack inspector, but generally, when there's a violation of the county code, the money is refunded. And right. I, I, do you uh, can you speak to any of the specific violations that, like, what, what they were? What was the violation of the code? Um, I cannot, sorry. Uh, let me see. I'm not gonna remember one. Yeah, yeah, yeah not, to be honest, yeah. I'm not going to remember that. I mean, they're not. So I don't commit them to memory, let me put it that way. It's I, I think generally from past experience, they, they generally are brought back into county code. Like if a sign is down or right. something, typically right. the okay. sign is, is put back up. Um, so yeah, I, I think generally the answer is yes to that. So if I may, uh, two years ago, the previous um, hack inspector, Sergeant and Captain that was uh, involved, there were seven found violations out of how many toes were there? No, 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 no. Oh, that was like, like 18,000 toes, I think, and there were seven found uh, in violation of the county code. Of those seven, according to the police department at that time, none of them were found to be egregious or, what was the other word, like? Willful. Willful in nature. They were all technical in nature. Uh, Somebody wrote down a sign. Uh, an old sign that we didn't have the, the, the new police number on, something like, you know, something that was a technical issue, not that there was something egregious done or willful to try to defraud somebody, is what they found. And that's, that's typically what I've seen since I've been on the board since I've been here. Uh, I've been here the longest. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I mean, I, I think your story is a, a good example of, of, while there are very, very few low percentage of, of complaints, there are, People that have contacted me who have not gone through the formal process and have not complained. So we're trying, we're definitely yeah. trying to raise awareness of, of how to, to go about that process. Yeah, and I read a lot of reviews online, but no one's putting in the reviews. Mm -hmm. I had this issue, this is what I did, and this is how it was fixed, or, you know, so that would be helpful. <clears throat> As a person who has experienced it, I should write on there so that other people can see that if they have. Fair enough. Okay, let's, uh, I guess we'll move on from that. Again, the, you know, for the record, like it's a pretty standard number of complaints, pretty low number of uh, violations, uh, and you know, no, no additional details there. So I don't think we need to go line by line or anything. Um, the next agenda was the unfinished business from last year. Um, so, I mean, first of all, I, I'll be 
candid that I've been frustrated with this board for the past three years because we've made recommendations in the past two years to the county board and nothing has happened. There have been no public hearings, no response from the Arlington County Board, um, and no changes to the local law as far as I know. So we're, we're we've, we've spoken about addressing that and we'll talk about that in the new business about having more frequent meetings, which potentially will get us in line with the actual county board meetings. Um, but that said, this section I was hoping just to address four of the main points that we covered last um, last year and we had made re requests of the county and I don't think any of them were done. So I just wanted to summarize those. We can certainly, anyone feel free to jump in if there's any, um, any other comments on it. Um, but I've got four kind of bullet points here. So in last year's meeting, uh, one of the first orders of business was the marking of vehicles. Um, so I had actually made a motion to uh, request that uh, tow spotters be marked as, uh, in, um, as vehicles that are run by the, the company. Um, my contention was, for example, like in DC, Uber drivers have a requirement to put an Uber sticker on the car to, to label them as such. The action item there was that the uh, county staff coordinator stated that he was going to ask for the legal authority of whether or not they could do that. The assumption at the time was that it, it wasn't going to be legal for Arlington County to make that requirement of private vehicles, um, but we never actually got clarification on that. So, okay. yeah, I'll have to go back. <clears throat> you didn't, but th there's nothing in state code that would, unless it's a towing, a, a tow truck, the county can't, even the state can't require me to uh, mark a private vehicle. I, I, I mean, again, like in D.C., they require... And, I, and I'll tell you, and I'll give you some history as to why that is. So, uh, especially for even people that I work for that, that, that monitor their own parking lots that don't want to be noticed, they don't want the confrontation of people come back and see that their car is gone and they're still sitting there. It's automatic confrontation, and you're not separated between, you know, the glass at work and the people that come to pick up your car. You're in a parking lot by yourself. Maybe if you know a female uh, lady we used to work for had her tire slash several times, used to monitor her own parking lot in her own vehicle, and she, you know, wouldn't want to have any type of markings on her car. My employees shouldn't be put to such such risk. Fair enough. We uh, we discussed that. Yeah, we discussed the the pros and cons of of implementing that, but the the action item was just whether it's legal or not. Um, so we'll we'll just put that back in in the record, and you know I. It's very possible that it, it might not be, but um, that was the, the action item that I wanted to, to raise again. Um, I guess the next one was the fees. Um, let's see. According to the minutes of storage facilities. Uh, going yeah, no, I, I only had four that I called out, like uh, okay. because I had action items. Uh, I'm happy if you want to bring up storage facilities. I forget the details. Well, just, that was about lighting, right? Detective O'Keefe had he made a point that uh, feel more comfortable retrieving vehicles certain standard such intended county upon enactment trust festival. You know, I, I think that uh, uh, O'Keefe's intent last year when he was speaking, and he's not here to defend himself, but I think it was more about feeling safe for showing up at a, you know, at a publicly lit place. <clears throat> I had no problem with it because where I'm located, I'm right next to Boston, so I didn't, it, this, this, uh, Amendment that he proposed to pass 7 last year. So, yeah, I, I, think that's, we, I think we all agreed. Yeah, I think, I mean, in my notes, it was just the kind of the ones that were were action items asking, asking for action items of the county rather than things that we just all agreed on and said, all right, let's just, you know, move on from there. Um, so I think, yeah, I guess the things we did agree on probably still stand as, you know, like the votes that uh, we're recommending to the, to the county. Um, well, we haven't heard anything going back from the county. That's that's, that's kind of this point, right? right? Like we, we're, we're asking for is the county to readdress the things that right. were voted on, particularly unanimously, but also the, the things that we asked for, for follow-ups for. Okay. Um, so essentially, we you want everything that was, I mean, everything that was agreed to last year to be to go forward again. Yeah. Everyone's agreed on that. Yeah. Okay. I think we all we all agree, right? We, we spent what, two hours last year making all these recommendations and proposals. We'd just like to readdress them. Um, next one was the, the raising the fee. Um, last year, 
the discussion was that they couldn't raise the fee. Now it, we, we understand that we can raise the fee legally. Um, and the action last year was that the county was going to look into whether they had the authority to do it. So I guess this time um, they technically do have the authority. So that question, I guess, suppose has, has been answered. Um, and I think we'll talk about that as in, in new business, we talked about commissioning a study on, on the actual cost and justification for raising the fee. So for that one, I don't think, I think our question's been answered that we, we were gonna ask of the county and we'll, we'll discuss the- Oh, it's the a legal obligation of the county. I'm sorry? It would become a legal obligation of the county. What would become a legal? makes an adjustment to the price. And no, the, the county code, state the state code says a minimum of 135 and a right. maximum of 150. It doesn't say you have to raise okay. it to 150. Okay. But if they don't review it every year, right? right. If they, they don't, don't review it every year, which right. they have not done, then the ordinance that we have in front of us is no longer good. They're required by the state code to review the fee annually. Right. The county is, not us, the county. And they haven't done so for three years. Okay. So, I mean, right now, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to get that. That, that kind of match, but I go out there and charge 150 right now, and then have do it on purpose and have her charge me, and then go before a judge and put down the state code and the county code, and let him decide if I'm right or wrong. I mean, I'm not going to do it because I'm trying to I'm trying to do this diplomatically, and I've been trying to do it. And, I, and then since we're here, and you know I love Brian to death. I went to high school with Brian, but he, he the the minutes that he took last last year did differ a little bit uh, not correct. And if I may, can I clean this up a little bit? Sure. So the fee was increased in 2006 by the state uh, to 135 and to have a nighttime and weekend fee or holiday fee added in 2006. The towing industry in Arlington County was allowed to charge that fee for six days before this ordinance showed up and it was taken away from us in 2006. And at that time, they reduced the fee to $100 instead of $135, and they took away the nighttime fees. In 2009, they raised the fee to $115, from $100 to $115. And that was the last time that the county ever raised the fee on its own, which was a decade ago now. 2019, that would be 10 years ago, a decade. It wasn't until 2017, I'm sorry, 2016, when I went down to Richmond and had the law changed to where Everybody in Planet District 8 would receive the 135 plus the nighttime weekend fees. Uh, if it flew through with uh, with very little resistance to Richmond, signed by the governor, and then Arlington was forced to raise the fee in 2017, July 1st of, to the to the state rate, which everybody was already getting in Planet District 8 except for Arlington County. Everybody else had already gone to it. Um, so here we are in 2019, and when we get to new business. Obviously, I'm going to make a motion to raise the fee to, to 150 since it hasn't been raised in the way that I look at it since 2006. Um, it has not been raised, so longer than a decade. But, you know, for us, you know, while all the other towers in the, that, because these gentlemen on the other side of the table, they don't operate that much in Arlington. They operate in Fairfax. They had the pleasures of being able to charge that high rate. And I do very little work in, Allen, in Fairfax, Alexander. So I, uh, I wasn't able to charge those fees. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get that later. But just, the notes that Brian took, it says that I stated that in 2016 was the last time that the fees were increased. That's incorrect. They were increased in 2017, but they weren't increased by the county. They were increased because they were forced to do so by state code. Right. And a lot of, well, a lot of the fees. Well, all that's left out. I want it to be in there because anybody's the, going to read it. The county manager's going to read it. I want him to know the, the whole, you know. And I, I, I'm going to probably come try to get a meeting with the county manager to explain this myself. But um, you know, Brian did a good job. It's just not correct. Yeah, I, I found discrepancies myself, right? So that's you know that we're bringing it up to uh, we're recording at this time. So yeah, hopefully we'll get a little better okay, uh, better procedures. <laughs> Okay, uh, next one in past business, signage, I think we all agreed, right? Like 24 by 7 by 365 wasn't necessary. 24 hours means 24 hours of, of the day. So I think we, that one, um, you know, as long as it's obvious. The county code literally says the sign has to say 24 hours, 7 days, but some lots only tow during the weeks or during business hours. So there's a there was a contradiction. So that was just a, a cleanup of the language. The next one that, that was interesting was uh, barnacle devices were brought up. 
Um, so for those, I guess everyone's aware of the barnacle devices, they're just giant things that suction cup onto a window. So there technically there was some debate about whether it was truly an immobilization unit, like a boot. Um, but the county had no code um, that specified it, and um, I guess neither does the state. Right. So I mean, well, the, the state does mention immobilization devices. For, so for a boot. Well, I mean, the, yeah. The, Sorry. I was. Uh, well, I have the update to the code about um, immobilization devices. Um, you want me to? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the request to the county was to research these right. devices, and, and, and yeah, if we had some findings, we'll let's okay. discuss them. And, and right, and I um, discussed this with the county attorney, um, assistant attorney today. It is. Let's see. It's chapter five ten. It's. 46.2-1231 of the Code of Virginia. It was approved March 2019. And so the only, the changes were, let's see, I'll read it. In lieu of having a trespassing vehicle removed by towing or otherwise, the owner, operator, let's see, or authorized agent of the <coughs> premises on which the trespassing vehicle is parked may cause the vehicle to be immobilized. And now this next part is marked out by a boot or other device that prevents a vehicle from being moved by preventing a wheel from turning. That was marked out and it was replaced with in a manner that prevents its removal or lawful um, operation. And then it also takes out provided that the boot or other, and then it writes in any device used to immobilize the trespassing vehicle does not damage the vehicle or any part of the vehicle. So there's this county code that's, that's being just proposed, that's state, state code that's yeah. being updated. So barnacle. So they still need to address it because with a barnacle, it doesn't immobilize the vehicle. No, but they took that out. It right, they took that out. So now the barnacles are allowed. They took it out. So you can probably print you a copy of it. Yeah, yeah, I can send it out. Makes, it makes sense. I don't know what she's saying. So yeah, they removed the specific word of verbiage. They, of, they removed of the verbiage time. for boot and, and they replaced said, it with a wording that so they made can't it broader. Drive the car. Can you drive the car? The barnacle still doesn't immobilize the car. It right, but it makes it illegally. Removable. You, you can't, can't drive a car with something on your windshield. Right, yeah. it's against law. lawful operation. That's like it's having absolutely. a thing hanging. I know, but it's, it's not mobilized. It's, right, but it's they said it illegal. Mm -hmm. Read the prevents it's legal operation. Prevents legal lawful operation. operation. That's yeah. illegal to drive with something <clears throat> on your windshield. You can't do. It. Yeah, it doesn't say it has to that's be mobile. Like, that's like having having to prevent legal operation. operation. So I, for, for the record, again, just what John mentioned last time, like you know, you don't have a dog in this fight, right? You're you're looking out for your towing business and not, you know, immobilization of, of devices. So but I think it still needs to be addressed. Exactly. So I think the, the question of the county, and it sounds like we now are authorized by the state to do it. So the request was, you know, I think for the county to provide some sort of um, legislation on it, things like rates and, you know, any similar structure that's applied to towing um, these immobilization or, or barnacles or, or Well, there's actually a fee put in there for boot fees, isn't there? <clears throat> And their fee that stayed allowed, so only up to $25, I believe. I think they took that it, out. They didn't yeah, take that out. It says shall not exceed So they didn't put any $25? $25. So, so I've got no problem if someone wants to use a barnacle and charge $25. That's, that's I mean, it's a boot, just yeah, like a boot. That's not what he was saying last time. I'm, I understand what he was saying, but it, it hasn't been addressed. So, I mean, if you're going to make, if it's a, under the same code and state, it's being immobilized, and the words taken away, unlawfully being able right, to so drive a vehicle. You got. I mean, the fee is the fee. It's so we would have to change the fee and the wording of the word boot. Well, well we right can't now, because that's state. Only allowed to charge twenty-five dollars. So. Yeah. So I mean, the discussion is like if the county could come up with what what you we're know, allowed we're to not do. do that, right? Like right. If, if the max is twenty-five dollars. Hundred percent. Yeah. He'd be down here cussing. So this again, you know, this is obviously the trespass towing advisory board, but you know, but the, that is part the, of immobilization is, is part of yes. the the legislation. So. Um, yeah, again, the request, I don't think we need a new vote on it, but, you know, it was just if you look into the legality. It sounds like the legality has changed, and then the request was, you know, what... Now, the state um, said the max charge is $25? Is, is that... Is it max or not? It's <clears throat> max. Okay, so that's all you can charge to immobilize a vehicle. So that's... Can't the Arlington have to put that into... Yeah, into the county code. The wording that the state used, they would have to put it into their code. So do you want to make a motion to request... The county. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, re the request last year was for the county to provide a recommendation on, on the language that should be added. And so I don't, you okay. know, that was what we requested right. last year. And 
I think that still stands, right? Like we were just kind of rehashing it. Sounds good to me. Yep. <laughs> Next. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so this comes to the, uh, the new business section. And this was a, a discussion that we had last year. Um, and the discussion is about the, the issue of records, of tow records being available to residents. Uh, it involves uh, the addition of that language. Um, I'll, I'll read the language. I don't think we put it on the agenda. Um, it's in the very back. Is it in the very back? It's the very last page of your packet. OK, yeah, so if we flip over to the, the very last. <clears throat> Um, we discussed this briefly last year. Um, the intent of this language, sorry, go ahead. What page? Uh, very last, just flip it over. Just flip it over. Ah, no. 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 Let's go back over. We're good now. So Arlington has always had a law, you know, for as long as I've been doing this, to, um, for residents to be able to go and request a copy of the photographs taken of the tow and inspect the, the contract that authorizes the tow. Um, that has always been in place, uh, but the motivation behind this language was to enable, well, two things. Is one is enable, uh, codify what it means to be a representative, because the law says either a vehicle owner or a representative of that vehicle owner can, can go and request these documents that are already provided in the, in the code. Um, so the, the idea here is to not only codify what it means to be a representative, but also to allow for remote, um, remote requesting of these documents. Um, for those new in the room, this was motivated by me personally going on site to advance towing and being denied access to these photos and having John call the police and having a restraining order filed against me so I'm not able to go on site anymore to request a copy of photographs. It wasn't because of me. Girl was a, a okay. We don't have to relitigate that, but that the <laughs> intent is if if there are residents who are being denied access to the photographs, and there are residents who are not being allowed to go on site, then the idea is if it's already provided for in the in the county code, it's just adding the ability to request that inf information remotely. There was some discussion. Well, we could break it into two parts. Um, there was some discussion about whether it should be a notarized signature or not, and what it took to authorize it, you know, a representative of a vehicle owner. And then there was some discussion about whether or not it needed to be a certified mail in making the request. So uh, do we want to discuss, let's take the, I guess the first half is like, do we feel that it is in a resident's right to request access to photographs taken at the time of the tow and the contract remotely, in addition to what they're already allowed to do is to go on site and request that information. Does that feel like a general consumer fairness thing that uh, consumers should be able to? I don't understand why they would need to come to the facility if it's going to be a problem. I've had, always had, I've always emailed them. Yeah. I just email them to the customer. Yeah, we email them to them right now. No, no offense, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like your situation where you went to the storage lot and they may or may not have felt threatened at the time. Well, whatever the case conspired, but to avoid that whole thing, I would just assume I email them to you and call it a day. Absolutely. I, and I, I, that's I'm fine with email you're, too. You're <clears> allowing <throat> them to come to the lot. No, this is to, to request it via certified mail. Right, but the verbiage in here. That they should be able to come to the storage lot. It doesn't say it should be provided in print form to the owner of the right of the, the owner of the vehicle system. or the owner owner's authorized representative via postal mail in response to a certified request sent via postal okay, mail. Then I'm an idiot. It's a it's the bottom. Yeah, the bottom okay. part. I'm reading up here. <clears throat> so we had discussion about whether or not it should be certified mail or email. Um, and my contention was when I, I have recordings and I've posted videos online where I have made those requests via email and I have recordings of advanced towing telling me we never got that email. So I'm proposing certified mail because you now, the resident now has proof that they made the request and certified mail in return so that the, the tow company can prove that they, they made the response. So the resident can't say, hey, you violated the code, you never got back to me. They have the, the certified mail as proof that they delivered it. Um, at whose expense is where the towing companies yeah, I think we're coming I think the towing companies last meeting were coming back with you at whose expense. Yeah, who pays You're the one requesting the information. Mm -hmm. 
So who, at whose expense are you expecting us to certify mail something? Am I expecting a check from you? I, if you want to add that to the code, that it costs a dollar fifty I mean, for whatever. A, for a no, certified mail costs three, three, four dollars, or actually eight dollars. Eight dollars for certified mail. I, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm just saying you, you wanted to discuss it, but yeah, the, the, no, honestly, it's, I think it's, the, it's, the, the contention last time at the other meeting was the price and who incurs the price. Correct me if I'm wrong. Of what your request was. Mm -hmm. If you're requesting us to do something that cost us money that's outside the privy of the tow, then that's not on us, that's on you. That's your request, you should be charged. I, I mean, I think that's a fair statement, but again, the, the county code currently says I can go and request a copy of the photograph. Right. So they, you have to print out, it doesn't say, oh, you have to, here's the charge for the paper. Well, it doesn't say you have to print the it. Right? So just, just so you know, and now obviously we have a different situation with the problem that we had, but Everybody who comes to my facility now, and I think that Sergeant Jones should be able to test the level this. Everybody who asks me for copies of the pictures, we write their email address down, run on their tow ticket, and they're sent to them immediately. That is not accurate, as of three weeks ago. Where from? Advanced Towing in Boston. Okay, did you give us your email address? Um, I was told, I, the woman there was on a, I what day Saturday or Sunday. Saturday or Sunday, so she said, call them, call the manager on Monday, uh -huh. I called Monday. And get a call back. I had to call Tuesday and call back Wednesday. I got the pictures. Did you got the pictures though? I did. Oh, okay. Via email. Okay. And I didn't right. need that, you know, didn't need to show. I showed my ID to pick up my car. The but reason, at the the time, reason being is the lady who does that for us in our office, yeah. when she was sick, she wasn't there on Monday. That's yes. who she told you. That is correct. Talking, right? Yeah, fine. I think I think she told, told, told you this her. whole conversation on the phone that she was sick. And that's no, why the someone else had to tell me, oh, she, she'll be in at 10 today, and I call back at 10, and right. like, oh, she's actually out today, she's not feeling yeah, well. Yeah, she didn't come back after the doctor, yeah. that's right, she went So I did get it when she came in, but for. So on site, I should have gotten it, because I could see them in the corner of the screen, and I said, can I get this printed? And she said, no, you'll have to call a manager. Yeah, we which, emailed it to her. Well, I don't know. I couldn't. I don't have the ability to print that from the front. She, no, she, we have to. Yeah, and you know how much it costs to print a picture? We don't have the ability to do that. I paid about $400 for my towing, so I don't right. care how much it costs for six well, cents. Well, 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 that's part of it. The towing is separated into sections, and this is not one of those sections that we have, a, we have put into the law that says we have to do this. So if it costs us more money to do something additional, it's it's an additional cost. The so, law literally says you have to you can request a copy of the photographs right. taken at the time of the tow, and well, a copy then, of the photographs well, a copy, is a printout. Right, a copy could be a printout on a piece of paper. That's right. Which is what she, what she's saying. She, she was not able to, to send them because when the county, you're picking up because, because we don't want to hold you. Hold on, I can answer that question. Because 14 it's years ago, when is she on the tab? No, she's no. not. Okay. Okay. I found out about this meeting this morning. All right. All right. These are, these <laughs> are courtesy responses. Okay. Okay. So, oh, sorry, so, yeah. so here, 14 years ago, when we met in Canada to do a tow study to find out what it would cost to, do, to actually tow a car in this county, we were denied. And it went on for years and years and years and years and years. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so the, the, what is the word user name? Like? Uh, the, 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 the cat and mouse game, it was a political issue. Not, it wasn't satisfying the needs of both the consumer or the tower. And so therefore, with no money coming in for all those years and all these different requests, regulation costs money. Why do you think it costs six cents? It doesn't cost six cents. I work for a and small the lady, business. My the lady who works for me, works for me on the weekends, she's been working for me since I bought the company from him. She has not had a pay raise in 13 years. She still makes the same amount of money. And, that's the, and all the new technology has come in with the Omadi and everything else. And, the, and just the ability I to understand. get stuff out of the computer. It, she's got some extensive training, but the whole picture thing, it's been left up to the lady who runs. And I think that we decided that it would be 48 hours would be suffice into getting those pictures that over. That would have been lovely. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, it just so happened she was sick on that Monday and that Tuesday. <coughs> but if she wasn't, she would have got, you would have had them on Monday or Tuesday. So you got them on Wednesday, I apologize for that. Okay. Um, well, and, proper you know, training, I guess, good yeah. I mean, I think so this is, a, you know, it's an example of a good event. Thank you for, for that information. I mean, we yeah. can certainly move on for the, the county code, like you can still says you can request a copy of the, the photograph at the time of the tow. Right. This particular edition is you can request that copy remotely, and we did say you, you could have 48 hours to respond to that request. A lot of this is just about codifying what, first of all, you can already do now on right. site, and it's just saying, hey, you can do it remotely as well. Um, if there's a cost to it, I, I wouldn't be opposed to saying, hey, you have to pay a little extra to, to get a copy of the photos. But right now, it says you don't have to pay for, for a copy of the photos. 
it doesn't say, oh, a copy of the photos must be provided at reasonable expense or anything. Right, but we're, this is an addendum that we're trying to, this isn't current, right? Correct. Correct. The, okay. Well, so the currently. Wording, the wording, the way the wording is, is what we're trying to change right now. No, we're trying to add, we're trying to just codify that in addition to picking it up locally when you're on site, which right. isn't being so technically right done. You, you would need to make a motion here. Uh, yes, no, this is the, the discussion about the, okay. about this. Okay, what's your motion? Um, I guess before we make the motion, is there so any So Keith made the motion last year, and O'Keefe, I, I don't Technically, I made the motion last year. Right, but then, and he, then he cleaned it up with like a 48-hour uh, notice, right? And then it got tweaked, and then w the discussion was, was stopped a little early. So I want to make sure that we're all on board with whether or not residents should have a right to get a copy of these photographs remotely. Do we, do we agree on just the part about getting it remotely? Mm -hmm. Now you're so saying, next, well, you're the next saying point, remotely, but I think you need to clarify well, what that's, you that's mean the next remotely. Point. What does remotely right. mean? Does remotely mean email? Does it mean certified mail? Does I think it mean email you have to pay? Would be the best word to use. Um, the, and my problem yeah. with email is I've got a recording, like I've literally been told, oh, we didn't get the email. So email doesn't necessarily but you carry a with it. you recording that you I got it. it, so when you make right. that phone oh, call, I never got we it. can correct it. I, I, I so never I've, got it. I actually found the motion that was made last year. I, I knew it was here. I knew that I read it. Do you mind if I read it? Sure. Detective O'Keefe made a motion to the TTAP support a requirement that all towing records be sent via email to the vehicle owner within 48 business hours of the request. That county code include a definition of, quote, authorized representative. Mr. Chice sought to amend the motion to specify a signed letter from the vehicle owner, not a notarized letter, was sufficient to appoint authorized representative. The amendment failed for lack of a second. The original motion was seconded by Mr. O'Neill and agreed to unanimously. So there was a motion made by Detective O'Keefe last year under these, these pro proposed amendments. And he's not here. He's not here. But in lack of him being here, if there's no more discussion, I'll make a motion now. I'll make a motion that the, the TDAB support a requirement that all towing records be sent via email to the vehicle owner within 48, 48 business hours of the request that the county code include a definition of, quote, authorized representative. Now, if you want to add in there, if they, if they are unable to and they're willing to, that there'll be a fee added to... Well, hold on, I made a motion. Wanted. Under Robert's rules, you'd have so to. So a motion has been made. Does, it, does anyone second that motion? Sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll second. Now that was under Robert's rules, that would be open for discussion. My motion. Sorry. <clears throat> well, I think, that, I mean, the 48 hours for the email is fine. I, you know, if there's some, if, you know, circumstance where you can't get it for 48 hours. As long as there's communication going on, right. no one's being left in the dark. I think the email will timestamp it. So if you send advance an email, right. it will timestamp it enough for us to say that yep, you so made a, you made a uh, a request. They didn't honor it within the 48 hours. Now we'll go over 48 business hours. 48 I mean, it started hours. Monday yeah. morning at nine o'clock to yeah. you know. Whatever. Then we would have till Wednesday morning at nine o'clock to get those emails or to get the pictures sent over by email. Well, technically, you said 40 years ago, just you know, you know, know, hours. Right, and yeah. that last year, yeah. Detective yeah. O'Keefe's yeah. 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 intent yeah. was yeah. that this yeah. hours be defined yeah. Monday through Friday. Yeah. But that wasn't, that wasn't your motion now, so you'd have to, you'd have to and try honestly, and amend your, your motion if you want, because the motion just said 48 hours. I do 48 business hours. That's not what you said. You're providing, you just needed the motion. I read it 48 business hours. I read it verbatim. I don't need to amend it. Yeah, I'll second the 48, the email by the 48 half hours. I think that I think that with the email timestamping it, I think that gives everybody uh, enough uh, documentation. Hours six days. I was going to say, what is that? Nine five eight. Yeah, forty eight business five. hours is six days. Forty eight business hours. No, that's one, not, no, one day no hours business hours. days, not hours. You said business hours. Yeah. Well, and technically, forty eight. I mean, the days. telling company is open twenty four seven, right. so it's, um, it's always Monday. Forty eight hours is three days. Two business days on Friday. Forty eight hours is three days. Twenty four plus twenty four. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Tuesday. So in business hours, it's actually I'm going to amend my own. That's what I'm saying. It's five hours. Like so, business day would be like eight to four. I'm going to. I'm going to define. Right. If I may, I'm going to change my own motion or add an amendment to my own motion. Yeah. You're not allowed. Go ahead. TTAB support a requirement that all towing records be sent via email to the vehicle owner within two business days 
of the request uh, right, that the county code include a definition of the authorized representative. So <clears throat> your definition is going to be cleared up that you're looking for, Matt, in my, the way that Can I made my motion. <laughs> it would be you to call a question to serve a second. Um, they call yeah, do, do we have a second for that amendment? Second. Okay. All right, so now we can discuss. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I have no objection to email the requirement of 48 hours. I believe the, if the police commit to the, the answer, oh, I didn't get the email, that the police won't take that as an excuse. Uh, we've, I've heard that no, many no, times. Most of the so. <laughs> the, you know, the no, I think that's fair, right? I, I think it's yeah, fair, too, right? The whole point of certified. She would verify that the email address that you sent it to is correct. And mm -hmm. if it is, that means he blatantly ignored it. And then that's mm -hmm. our Which, problem. Yeah, yeah, again, I, I, I think it addresses your concern about the cost, right? Because email's basically. Well, certified mail is still in here on the sub. That's, that's, that's not his, his that's motion. Not motion. motion. Uh, that's not part of your That's yeah. not so part of his motion. The motion would take these and obsolete them? So. No, no, I'm going to make another motion. We have more motions. There's more parts to this, right. this cost. <laughs> cool. So I'm, I'm fine with, with that initial part. All right, that's the first part of it. All right. Um, so I guess I do. Are we fine? So my other motions are going to discuss uh, the language about. He's the, uh, the Matt, you have to call for a vote. I know, but before the vote, I want everyone to be aware that there are three parts to this vote. Is the first one is, is on this motion. The second one is on the language about um, the clear photographs and the, the contract. And then the third one is going to be out defining the, uh, the representative. So for this one, I agree. I think that's fair to do the email, 48 hours. Two business There are two business days. days. Good mm -hmm. point. Um, and then we'll, we'll conduct the other, the other votes for the other two, two sections. So we'll break it down. Um, all in favor, I guess, just say aye. 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 Unanimous? Okay. I'm sorry, you can't actually vote. Okay, I was like, I'm just saying anyway, That's Encourage yeah. eyes. Um, okay, so the next section, you know, again, my motion is uh, to adopt the, the a language. In addition to that language, or those bullet points, uh, we'll let the county decide on the exact verbiage, mm -hmm. but to include the, um, the phrase, uh, a copy of the contract and complete unaltered photographs, unaltered copies of the photographs taken at the time of the tow. Um, those are two things that are currently allowed for in the, the Arlington Code. Um, so the motion is just to include those two pieces of information to clarify that, um, again, I say specifically a complete unaltered version of the photograph because I've had my photographs were altered in my case. Um, so you make so a motion, Matt? I, my motion is to include the, the language that a complete unaltered version of the photographs and the contract authorizing the tow be available in that request. My motion. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you. Discussion. Now, what do you consider altered, unaltered? Because <clears throat> the second we it, enhance I mean, it I, and send it to you, it's altered. Uh, you can email a copy of, of the actual original file. In my case, okay. the photograph showed that the car was moved after it was towed, and the, the person who sent me the copy took a camera and just took a small picture. They didn't send me the original unaltered photo. They, they took a small corner of the uh, right. of okay. the photo to obscure information that was in that photo. So you want the original photograph? Yeah, or just the, the original if undoctored. Have, if they zoomed in to show you where the violation was, mm -hmm. those photos as well. Right. In the in the entirety and all of the photos. Yeah. Like in my case, I was only I only got one, and they wouldn't give me the other photo. So you know the idea is just to codify that. Yeah. Well, usually we just show the violation unless there's an accusation of damage. Well, actually, the the code and I that's really, the problem. The code says you have to take that. all four. So that's why I'm right. saying in this okay. vote, like that's why we just had this this no, language. I really we want all so those photos. If I'm a, I'm not from I I can't remember verbatim the actual what the verb says for. Uh, the contract portion of it. I've got no problem with the picture part of it, but I think that my clients will have a problem with being emailing contracts around with this one to somebody like uh, Sergeant Jones, Sergeant Jones, or, or, or detective over here. I, uh, to me, I that that's my only dog in my fight. Is I I've got no problem showing somebody my contract at my facility, but emailing my contracts around uh, to anybody, um, I would have a problem with that unless it's unless I'm sending it directly to. Uh, government official. 
the government official here at the county or, and that'll be something for the county attorney to decide. I, I don't think that we can make a recommendation. Some of these are legal, legal. <laughs> matter of fact, all of them are legal documents, but some of our contracts are like 70 pages. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, I don't have the, the language right now in the county code do you, do you, where it specifically says that you can have the contract authorizing the tow. Um, I'll just say you can see it, but I don't think it says anything about. I think so. Sticky, inspect the copy. copy of it. Right, so that's, and that's kind of the sticky point of this, getting everything remotely. The difference between seeing it and being able to. So, I'm, and also, to Detective O'Keefe, his, in his remarks last year, his problem with the uh, emailing of the contracts was identifying who signed the contract. It was a safety issue for him in the police department, if I recall. The, the, e the emailing of the contracts, I, I don't see the safety issue in it. I, I see the, the relevance of when the citizen arrives at the gate, the window, or whatever, that they physically can look at it to look at a screen from a distance with whatever lighting it is, is unreasonable, in my opinion. I believe that the citizen should be able to look at the copy and not just a screenshot of whatever. I'm not saying, you know, of whatever the piece that they want to see. They should not be allowed to take a photograph of it or do any of those other things. However, by law or by code, they, they have a right to, to see it and, and look at it themselves, not somebody dictating the pace as to what they're saying. That, that's my interpretation. I've been at this for not very long, so perhaps it's wrong, but have, I believe they should physically be able to. To see the contract between the property manager and the tow company? Right, and that's what the, I'll, I'll read the, the, the language. Part of the part of the tow, uh, so right. that somebody goes back and retributes against that person. I, I'll, read the, I'll read the language and we can, we can continue, but it says the towing and recovery operator and owner, operator, or leasee of the property shall maintain for public inspection at its business offices and at the property respectively copies of all contracts or other documents that appoint the operator as the authorized agent for the owner, operator, or leasee of the property for purposes of authorizing tows from the property. So the, the debate, again, John, I'll let you talk about the, the public safety act aspect of it, but you know, my, my contention is that towing is a very unique business in which a, a, a resident is forced into a business relationship and they, they can't fire that person and go go take their business elsewhere. So in this particular example, like a resident should have the right to go and complain to whoever authorized their car to be removed. If my if I stopped paying my card note and my car got repossessed, I would have a right to go and face my accuser and I would have a contact information of the bank who went and and authorized that repossession. Um, if there's any debt, if there's a lien against my car or something, if someone came and took my car, I would have access to the person who authorized that, not just the agent who dragged the car away. So, so that's the justification for why you should have access to the contract. A lot of times these businesses don't even know who authorized the tow. A lot of the time there's a shopkeeper who's like, I don't know, we've, you know, we pay lease to our landlord and someone else has authorized this tow and they can't even answer the, the question to the, to the resident. I'm fine with the photographs being sent via email. Uh, I just have um, reservations about the contract being sent. Um, I believe that the contract should be viewed and be accessible to people upon asking for it when they go to the tow or go to the property. I just have a problem with it being sent because uh, it is a legal document between the towing company and the building. Um, the problem is, is that once you send it via email, it, the contract's now out there, it's loose. It's, in the wind, <clears throat> and it can go wherever it wants. Um, and the way the code is written, it says that they have to produce the contract when you ask for it. It doesn't say how that's produced. Um, yeah, it says available for inspection. Right. So my thing is, is that would be an inspection. When we talk inspection. It's me going out there to do the the police, inspection yeah. and to look at it and physically touch it. So. I think that uh, for the, that purposes, I don't like the contract being part of the email. Um, just because it's going to do, what's going to end up happening is they're going to want to redact portions of that contract, personal information that's going to be an expense on the tow companies to do that redaction. 
And I think that if you just go to the, the towing company, they give it to you, you have it there, you can read it, you can look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't take photographs of it. You can take a note if you need to. Um, That's not enforceable, though. But literally says here, um, it, it not only has to be at the tow company, but at the, the, the residence, at the property yeah. itself. So you have, you know, but I just don't, I don't agree with sending the contract being. Uh, no. You know, we've, we've discussed this, and to be honest with you, I get it, right? It's a, it's a private contract, um, and there, there might be trade secrets and things like that in there. Um, I don't want to really, I guess we have to kind of hijack this motion because it's, it's part of the motion. But again, my intention of having access to the contract is knowing who do, who do I go and talk to when I want to complain to, to the business owner who basically took my car out of that, that, out of that lot. So I, I would be fine with amending language or defining contract or a contract summary, which has you know, the, the entity, contact information, including phone and email, and under what conditions uh, does that business authorize the tow? I mean, I've had complaints from residents who literally their registration sticker expired on that day, and at midnight, their car's out of the lot. And they don't know that whether the, the apartment complex has authorized that or not. They, they have no way of knowing you know, whether or not the, the complex authorized that kind of tow. Well, in that case, they should go to their rental office. walk right downstairs to the rental office yeah, and ask them. Yeah, the contract. Well, they don't know the rental office. I mean, they probably didn't have a reason to be there. So that the, the problem is, is that <clears throat> I think there's ample time for people to get the contracts. Um, you know, because it's at, not only is it at the tow lot, but it's also at the place where your car was towed. Have you ever had somebody come in and ask so, you for the contract? I have asked multiple times. No. But and on, that no. exact reason. It, initially, have time. you ever, when they come to pick up their car from you, have you ever had somebody ask I you mean, for their contract? It, most people don't know. Yeah. You tell them that that's why the signs are up, right? No. Uh, Gina has no problem actually pulling up the contract. Right, but that, I mean, we, do, we deal with a lot of county stuff, but we, we say the sign's at the entrance. Yeah. And if they need the, the property mean, owner's name. So back, yeah. back before the ordinance started went into place, you know, people would get their cars towed. They wouldn't know who right. authorized them. Well, do you, if they went and did their homework, it, it, the contracts for us is to protect insurance information for right. people that are in, that's also in the lines of the contract, um, and, and the entity of the person who actually had the vehicle removed. They don't, a lot of times they don't want their entity known that they had the car towed. That's so that people don't go back and retribute. Well, it's an individual and stuff. I took a lot of cooperation. I took a lot of guard style apartments. The managers get their tires slashed and, and stuff. And um, But anyway, if you got your car towed from a certain address, 1515 Muscle Bar over here, JBG, right. you look up who the owner of the property is, and boom, there's an the entity, and that's who my contract's with. I mean, it's. And that, I, I just don't think that's always the case. I mean, so I, again, I, I, I'm not interested in proprietary information, but I want to know, you know, I want the information on who, who authorized that. Yeah, what was... And I've had no problem showing the rules, the regs, the, why you got your car to it. That's the front page of the contract. The second page has the information on that I don't want people to see. And the front page for the rules and the regulations, no problem with right, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I agree with uh, Detective uh, Toomey. I, I don't want to send it over by email. Come by the shop and I'll let you look at it all day long. Not me. What days are you there? Just cleaning in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay. So why don't we just to kind of move things along to amend your motion to say the contract has to be available to people, which it is already states in there that it has to be available at the tow lot. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the photographs are if they're sent. Um, Complete. Via email that they have to attach the originals as well as whatever zooms or advancements mm -hmm. they, they did to show the violation. During normal business hours. During normal business hours. For the email attached to your one that the other motion made. Well, normal business hours are 24-7. No, I mean, the, it's going to attach to the two business day. So you'll have two business days okay. to be able to see the, you know, to, for the unaltered photographs, because that's going to be attached to the other motion with the email, and two business days to visit, to, to get the contract. But how do you get the contract? You have to go back. Back you have to go on then. site because the discussion was now you don't want to go on site. So, so you so, take time off of work to go back to the property. You can go to the property and see it. Yeah. Well, I did talk to my property manager who had, I think, a meeting with you the next day. So I, I think I, where we took Austin Park Apartments, Kobe Owens. <clears throat> so, yeah, so I guess we want to vote as, as is. We had a motion and a second and included the word contract in there. Like, did we want to? I mean, because remember, the, the purpose of this, like, if you say, hey, it's available for inspection, I'm like, I can't go and inspect something. So we got a vote on the trier one. I'll make well, we already voted on the contract from the email. Uh, 
second. So we have okay, now we have an amendment to say only the complete unauthorized photographs, and we're going to strike end contract from there. Yes. Aye, yes. second. Call for vote. Man. You want to vote? Ayes? Aye. Three, four, four to one. I vote nay. All right, uh, let's move along. Um, the next motion, I guess, would be to define what a, uh, a registered owner is. So again, the language is on the back here. Uh, certification of vehicle ownership or owner's representative representation shall be made by providing a copy of the vehicle's registration and the tow receipt. Um, I have a motion just to add that language. Uh, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? I mean, you got the registration and the tow receipt, obviously, you know the owner. You're not the owner, you know the owner, and the owner gave your permission to give you that. So, right. I'm fine with that. You certified. Yeah. And you asked for pictures, we're giving them to you. I yeah. mean, uh, I don't care who you are. I've had people call up that I know them on the car, and we're going to give them the pictures. We can bring <coughs> out the whatever. Pictures. <coughs> the pictures thing is not a big deal to a town company. <laughs> we're going to provide them to whoever. Okay. So, uh, was there any other discussion on defining, clarifying the definition there of an owner's rep, uh, vehicle owner's representation? All right. Do you want to do a? Vote? Now, is that a pawn? That's not a pawn pickup, right? That's not no, a pickup it's just, vehicle. That's just about the picture stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's a postal mail certified request. Right, but we we, we made a motion. Yeah, that was shut that out. Yeah, we didn't even talk. Your, about your motion to go away the certified right. mail. Okay. So this is just your the last sentence. Photos. No. It's just the last sentence. Yeah, so I'm fine with that. I'm good. All right. Who would like to have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to zero. Okay. All right. Um, I think let's let's move on. I, I do want to kind of dwell more on this uh, the um, the issue of the contract, but. It's getting late, and the next bullet point I think kind of addresses this is again one of the reasons I think we haven't been kind of heard by the the county is sometimes our board our board meetings don't line up with the county board meetings. So the proposal was to have these meetings kind of hopefully shorter and more frequently. Um, three times a year was the proposal by the county, um, with the thinking that yeah we could do fewer pieces of business, but at least. Hopefully one of those meetings kind of lines up with the, the county proposal. Go ahead. So under Robert's rules, Matt, you as the chairman, or previously Sergeant Jones, or me as the chairman before, as the chairman, you can call a meeting whenever you see fit. Now, whether or not you have a quorum to conduct business depends upon the people that show up to the meeting. But you don't have to set in stone a certain, okay, we're going to have a meeting this time, this time, this time, this time. As the chairman, you, as the chairmanship, you, can, you can call a meeting whenever you want. Question is, would would anyone show up? I mean, like what you're basically saying is, uh, Sorry, yeah, I won't show up. Be there. Yeah. Um, um, I said, if, if Sean Jones called me, I'd be there. With smile. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I, literally, what you're saying is, I wouldn't show up if you called a meeting. Not true. <laughs> Depends upon what the topic is. The, the point if you've got is, a topic to discuss, sure. So long as it's so long. In the towing industry, I'm all for regulation. I, I think regulation helped me put quite a few people out of business and keep my spot where I'm at. I think that... Uh, That's horrible. I guess. I mean, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, regulation, we, we survived through regulation. We really did. And you tortured me in the process. Sorry, bro. Smaller fish. You're but, still here. But, uh, yeah. but I, I think that I'm, as long as the agenda topic is something, you know, if you get past the political side of the, of the fee stuff, I'm... I'm game to I'll come meet with you whenever you want. So mm -hmm. to that, I can explain more. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So our intention was basically, so for instance, this year, where this meeting, we could hold another meeting after the General Assembly's out in March, and we can meet in like April-ish, and I could take everything from this meeting 
take it to our county attorney and bring it back and say, look, this is what we this is what we ran through. This is what we can do, what we can't do, and then bring actual language for we all for you all to vote on. So he can set that date today. Right, but so we before the end of the meeting. So wait, so you're telling me that the county manager is not going to even see our work now as soon as we're done, so that he can make a recommendation to the county board to move forward? Because that's this has gone on for three years now, where the county manager has not taken any work that we've done in this body and set it forth to the county manager to make any recommendation to the county board what's whatsoever. We, we we have taken these items to the county managers. It, it's his discretion is to bring them forward to bring them forward to the county board. Um, the board, this board, can um, independently uh, advocate outside of that venue, right? But what you asked was for to, for us to bring recommendations to the county board. That's under the manager's discretion. So we brought uh, last year's work to the manager. It was his it was his choice to not not move that forward under this year's county board legislative agenda. Um, but what we're saying is. Given a little more time and a little more attorney's office review, perhaps we could have convinced the manager that it was worthwhile taking that for. Because we did try it. We thought there was there, there were um, <clears throat> valid purposes for, for the work that you've done last year. It was just that in his, you know, uh, he's you know, got more pressing things. That's that's his decision to move things forward in the board, right? Thank you. Yep. So the proposal, yeah. So like the hope would be the county would take all our requests that we just talked about for an hour and a half, um, produce responses and produce some, some proposed language, and the next time we could meet on that proposed language just in time for the county board to meet to have public hearings. It, it strengthens your vetting process, I guess is how I'd summarize it. The closer we do it to the county meeting. Yeah, and, and, it, and it brings things to, through the manager so he has time to digest it rather than put us feeling like we're pushing him to make a decision, okay. right? So just to clarify, we're asking the board to make a recommendation to change the board to having three meetings, or are we just saying that we're going to have three meetings? Just, yeah, how do we feel? Do we feel like we have enough to discuss? I mean, to have, I mean, do we like this plan that the county is proposing to like meet again in March? Uh, to, to Is the county going to get back to us? <clears throat> So I guess, yeah, on, on that okay. condition, we'll say we, we'll meet if we if we get all these That's questions answered. Thinking. If we bring you back uh, draft language, um, from the county, from from the county, and I mean, there's something to come to talk about. Okay, I mean, I've got no problem with that as long as we're coming okay. back in and talking about something different. But you know, I feel like you know, we, we Sergeant Jones had a great meeting issues. last year. We have a whole bunch of points put in place, and we got went, went nowhere with it. Unless there's something really hot topic like second signature, you know. But it just it never it never materializes because you know I've been on this board longer than anybody else. I've been to all these meetings. I think I've been before the county board three times in 13 years mm -hmm. for an actual decision to be made for something different. And all three times, it was not good. Mm -hmm. It was all for the detriment to the towing industry right. with no fee increase. Right. So I have a lot of reserve about going back before the county board. <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> and I, I mean, I love that, you know, as long as the politics are aside, I think that my political problem on the board is now gone. So I think that, you know, moving forward, I got a whole fresh uh, group of, of, of bodies up there. I, mm -hmm. I would. I would, I would love it so long as the agenda topics, you know, if there's something for us to talk about or something the police department wants to see cleaned up, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm, that's where I come from. We all agree? Like if, like, so we'll, we'll meet, we'll propose, and we'll, you know, we'll target three times a year if there's something to do, but we'll tentatively accept, you know, a meeting in March once the county has had time to, to evaluate Sure. Um, and, and produce results uh, or responses to what we've discussed here? You would finalize that after you got something back from the county, I would. Well, that's what we'd meet right. for, is right. to review right. the language okay. that the county produced okay. yes. and, and say, yes, this is we agree this is what we were right. proposing. Okay. And hopefully we give you, you know, enough time to review that language <coughs> before the meeting so you can have a productive conversation if there are nits in it. Because, for instance, the county attorney's office says, Oh, the, the issue with the, um, the immobilization. Oh, we've got to have more discussion on that. We'll bring that to you so you're not like caught off guard with the end meeting. That's the intent. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the other, okay, so I think in, informally we agree we can communicate over email or anything. The other bullet point right after that was to request the staff to clarify and bring proposed edits to the ordinance to reconcile with the state code. So I think the county has already seen discrepancies between county and state, so you know, they're going to bring that in line, so that will be another point of discussion next time. That's, I don't think we need a vote on that, right? We all agree the county's going to try and reconcile the code. Um, 
I am going, I had enforcement on the list here. I'm going to punt that one in the interest of time. Uh, again, if we meet more often, we can discuss that at, at some point in the future. Um, some of that discussion was, uh, I, I mean, just as a background, like I've kind of reported to the police I've made complaints to the police that, that are not on this list, right? So that, that it was about how do we actually enforce the laws that are that are on the books now. Um, yeah, let's just table it for now and think about it for the next time when we have uh, when we have more time. We'll put it up higher on the agenda items. So the last uh, one for discussion goes back to the rates, right? Like we discussed last time. Um, requesting or the, the the request to the county was, can we raise the rates to 150? Now. The state law says, yes, you can. And the question is, should we? Um, so my contention, I guess, is that like there's there's currently no justification um, short of, you know, it's been 10 years or whatever. Um, there was discussion last time, I believe it was Al who brought up that a study was done at some point. We do did. you guys recall that? I did a study. I submitted it to the county uh, before, I was it 2007? I mean, it was 12, 13 years ago. I submitted a study to the county then, and we paid for it. Um, the county had commissioned George Mason University to do yeah, a study. And, that one and then when I decided that I couldn't take it anymore, and I went to Richmond, they withdrew their ability to do so. And I wish they hadn't gone through it because the, there was, was a lot the, the rate's going to come out to be astronomically higher than 150 in Arlington County. But it would never be done. And the reason why it wouldn't get done is because they knew that I'd have that information. And they didn't want me to be armed with that information to take it to Richmond. So they backed off their study. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. John, you said the state code says the county has to do it every year? If the county does not review the tow rate by state code, doesn't review it annually, then the code is no longer valid. Because I read our entire, while we're sitting here, I read the towing thing. It's not. Anywhere in our ordinance. We'll have to check with the yeah. Uh, I think the county. It was never put in there. Incredible. It's never put in there. But state code requires that if we if you re if we are regulated and we're not given the, the maximum fee for the state code annually, what, what what means annually? I don't know, but I would say yearly. Probably July. I think that I would win a yearly case if it's not. And I that was my that was my threat long ago. But I didn't want to get into a a, a headbutting match with the police department, so I backed off. <clears throat> I didn't. Uh, knowingly overcharged to get my case before a judge to let him decide whether or not my, I, you know, my, my argument held water or not. Is that, uh, just for clarification, for the reconciliation with the state code, is that one of our points that they're going to be looking into to keep our ordinance in line with the state code? Right. So, so there's that, that would be one of the things that in our March April meeting that would be in the But that's what we bring back. And we already have started the process of reconciling and there's some language in there. And it actually <clears throat> with uh, with making edits to our ordinance, it actually cleans up the um, the signage issue twenty four seven. Like we could uh, we know that B and E are contradictory. So cleaning it up addresses that motion. So it, it does address multiple okay. um, concerns. So yes, that one we'll bring that back in our I think this is the first we've heard of the review cycle, though. So we'll have to we'll yeah, discuss that. We'll have to discuss that as a, as a separate bullet. Because you are first to you, but it, I, I, you've made this I've clear for years. That's fair. Clear. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So, and I, so if we're at that point, portion yeah. of the program now, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, ask the county board, county manager, to ask the county board to increase the tow fee from one thirty-five to one fifty. Um, is there a second? Second. All right, discussion? Anyone? My discussion on that, if I may, would be that the county doing it itself has not done so for 13 years. And back when I first went into business, there were seven operating towing companies in this county. Uh, you know, we had competition. Um, they were able to survive. We were able to survive. The times and costs have increased. This is the most expensive place to do business in the entire Commonwealth. There's nowhere else more more expensive to do this kind of business. Um, we own our land by Boston, and I I plan on staying. But I can't stay, and I'm tired of cutting corners to marginalize my operation because of the increase that we cannot get. That's why I went down to Richmond last year. That's why I got the language to switch so that the county can consider to go to 150, and I hope that they do it very soon, because I'm going to be back in Richmond again this year, 
to force that issue if we can't get it done, uh, you know, diplomatically. Here's my only concern with raising it right now. I'm not saying that we can't, but I'm just saying right now, I wouldn't be a very good s uh, steward in my position if I didn't have all the information to do that, which means I, I think we need to figure out, the county needs to figure out if they've been violating state law technically. Mm -hmm. By not doing this, the, the review, and I, and I think they need to do a review before, so that we can actually see the, the data, if, before we can make an, a, 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 an educated vote. So we've asked them to do that time and again, yeah. they won't do it. Well, I think and we offered to even pay for it at one point in time. They still withdrew the request because they know that that number's going to come back to the astronaut behind. Well, I think that now that we have new people uh, in places, uh, I think we allow this allow them to have a shot at doing it. And if they can't produce it, then I think so then right we have now, then we go and we go ahead and we make the vote to, to recommend the change because the county's clearly decided not to leave with the So in Planning District Eight, um, Prince William is the only one that's changed the ordinance from 135 to 150 right now. Fairfax is working on it. Um, I'd like to be the second, so I've got a motion out there to raise the fee to 150. No, uh, you got a second. And you already have a second. Okay. Uh, we were in discussion period at this point, so. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%, I just don't think it's ever gonna get there. I would love it, because I think that that number, come back when I'm armed with it, it's gonna be you know, $200 a ton, if not more. Okay. The problem is I don't think, yeah, well, <clears throat> it's a discussion because I don't know what other everybody's going to vote, but I, I think right now, me personally, I would not feel comfortable voting for the, the rate until I figure out if the county's going to do it. If they don't do it, so but that's why I, maybe we should table it to the April meeting. And the reason I say that is because that'll give the county ample time to come back over with a response to everybody. To say, so I have to say, yes, we're going to do this review. It won't be the time to do the review. It's going to take them a lot longer than until April to do a it review. Will. But at least we can get them to say yes. We were going to do the review, year. and then move it through. So I had the same conversation with uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Lafley when he was the hack inspector long ago, and um, where I came out was I said, "Well, do you get a cost of living increase, pay raise every year, or no. something?" And he said, "No, I don't." He said, "I said, well, have you had one in the last three years?" He said, "I have." I said, "Okay, well, we haven't had one now for 13 years." 13 years is a long time ago. These ladies, Well, I've got trucks that I would be embarrassed to show you that I keep it out in San Diego because I've only seen it on Arlington. i got one sitting outside. <laughs> I mean, I, I I mean the county has it raised, but you have had cost of living increases just as soon as, as recently as, what, 2017? The, the, and they were forced to give us what was the state but, rate. Yeah, but right. just because but it was state, done. The in state it, came up with that, that price, and they took it away from us after six days. A, a lot of this, I mean, it's, it, a lot of this has to do with Dillon rules in the first place, right? Like, does the state dictate the rates or does the county? Um, so, I mean, I, I know, I, I hear the number like oh the county hasn't you know voluntarily raised the rate in 13 years but the rate has been raised in, in the past several Only years because they were forced it doesn't, it, it's still raised um but they raised I'm, it because they were forced my proposal is that you say you yourself have you gotten a pay raise the last 13 oh, years no, okay. anything you've done nope that one my, pay raise my would be <laughs> oh you don't work I, I'm, I'm a contractor I to be here here different contracts well the only issue is not have one from Arlington county in 13 years that's just what you're saying is Okay. Arlington hasn't raised the, the rate, but it's disingenuous to say that the rate hasn't raised. So I think all we're, all it we're saying is- It was forced because I made it forced. It doesn't matter why it was raised, the point is it was raised. So the question, <coughs> on, the question on the table is, the is it justified to raise it further? Um, so it doesn't matter whether it was Arlington who raised it or the state who raised it. The, the rate from the consumer and as the resident advocate, from the resident's perspective, the rate has, been, has increased. Can you so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I can, but I'd rather do this diplomatically. I mean, I'm told no, I'm, asking, I mean, I'm told no every time. You know, I know, it's, it's I know, I know. you asked for it last time. I've been back. Last I've been back. I've been back. I've been back. And, you know, last year, the only way that I could get this through was to change one little piece of language because I couldn't go the whole rounds. So I had the support last year to change it to force them to raise the fee to 150. But I couldn't do that because there's two changes in the code. So I had to wait my time for another year. So I'm going to have to go back to Richmond again this year. So what are doing, doing this now going to change it? Because I, I would hope that they would put this before the county manager and he would see that, you know, cost of the business on it is just far yeah. more expensive than it is anywhere else. <clears throat> so, yeah, if I could jump in from staff perspective here, um, we're not going to conduct a rate study on behalf of uh, an industry group. Uh, we just put that out there. That, that's just not going to be saleable in the manager's office. Um, I can right. pretty confidently speak for the manager on that. 
Um, but what I would say is that if your study from 2007 still still holds up and, and some of the assumptions are still valid, why don't you provide a summary of that along with that document? I know I haven't read, read it. I, I know you said you furnished it to the county. I don't have I don't have <coughs> access to it. I'm not sure where it is. But what the manager asked for was justification. It doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to come from us. It can come from you. Um, and I think you make a valid, I think you make a lot of valid points. So I, I would love to see some of the analysis that was baked into that. Um, and then that would give us something to, to work on for the next four months or three months, um, rather than just come back to you and tell you, oh, we're not going to conduct a study. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> like, that's, so that's pretty I, much what I've changed in 12 years. Yeah, yeah, of I course. The cost of trucks is double insurance. Sure, possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can contextualize some of that for us. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's, but what we're going to be looking for is some data that suggests, rather than anecdote or whatever, that 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 I know we know the cost of business is high. That's fine, but we don't know what the margin per tow is. We don't know. There's a lot of like sort of foundational variables here that that we just don't have access to. It's your it's your information, not ours, um, and we're not going to investigate that. Yeah, right. that. We know the number of toes, um, for instance, but I, I think that you can you can place that justification in our hands and let, let us bring that before the manager um, if we think it's valid. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. But the the price of the toe in 2007 and what the information right, that has, it comes out to be actually more than what it is right now. Right. So. And that was back then, and I mean we're talking 12 years later, and things have doubled and tripled in cost. Even if you just apply CBI to it or something like that, I mean at least right, it's something that's going to go to, to them now and it's higher than that. I mean, you know, I mean there's ar there's already a bill that's going to be submitted this year to force the fee to go up to a certain rate, along with the additional right. fees to be raised even higher. Right. And I think that that's going to be successful. So are so you trying to wait till then? Or I don't. I'd rather do this diplomatic. I'd rather the county raise the fee now if, if we could get this before the county manager and before the county board. I, but then I, it's not like that's going to happen. I, I think we, we agree in principle. I'm just saying we're going to need some justification to I, and, uh, to move that diplomatic conversation And forward. I'm telling you, Brian Stout and I went to high school together. We yeah. talk to each other every day with yeah. lunch all the time. And yeah. I heard that same thing from Brian all the time. Mm -hmm. I agree with Brian. Right. The problem is that when we got to the table, we really wanted to, you know, let's, okay. Yeah. And I waited and waited and waited. I didn't have a chance to wait for another year. Okay. So I pulled that line of credit and went to Richmond with my wife <clears> off of the house that was given to my grandfather. That's the only reason I'm still in business today. Yeah. The only reason. We were, sick. we were so far sunk. And now I'm still I'm so far invested. In it, I've got nowhere to get out. I'm, I'm stuck. That's why I'm stuck here. But uh, you know, if, if the operating costs and and regulation costs money, yeah, more regulation means more money being paid out. Well, I'm all for regulation. I've always been for regulation. I voted for it every time. Yeah. I've got no issues with uh, all the stuff Matt's uh, requested here tonight. What is the uh, young lady? I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I I just need to see the money so that we can continue to operate and operate without having to cut corners and uh, you know fight with insurance companies about you know the rate to the point where we were going to be out of business not have a policy because we couldn't afford it. I was told. I can, I can still, I mean, the same from a staff perspective. You know, I understand if you want to put this forward, I think it would strengthen your argument if you could provide the data, if you want this to go to the county manager before it goes to Richmond. So. Well, I'm just, we're just suggesting that you provide that data. You could go to Richmond. You could go to Richmond. Right, but we go to the manager without the data. The whole industry is going. It's not just me. I mean, the, the entire industry is going to go down for a fight. Well, yeah, I mean, everyone's happy to say. I, data to go down there? Yeah, I mean, but, but I think that's that's they the, the, the fee. They look at it and they increase it over time. They look to do. So it, whether it be a CPI index, a cost of living increase, that's how they increase the fee in Richmond. It's not, you know. Do they commission a study? I've never seen a, com a study commissioned in Richmond, never. Uh, you know, this is going back 20 years ago when I first got out of college and the fee was 90 bucks, or 95 in the state code. The first time they raised the fee for the state code was like a decade before they did it the first time. And since they've done that, they've now increased it from 135 to 150. So uh, I think when they did the CPI or whatever, it was actually less than like government Two percent, less than two percent a year, or something like that, when it came out to be, because it's been so long since it's been addressed. I don't know for a fact. I just I've lived it and walked it for so many years down in Richmond. Did what? Fairfax County do stuff? Fairfax County did not. They submitted. You'd have to ask Alf. Fred. I don't do a whole lot of work in Fairfax County. Fred does all that. But they, I believe that they tried to set up like a, a dumb company and run it and had the guys Steve Sinclair come out with what the cost would, would be for a tow. He's the gentleman that saved Fairfax County millions of dollars on their 
lighting and government contracting and stuff like that. So he's the one that helped them with this. So they, I don't know what those offices were. And I don't know if it was cut short because of my efforts and not wanting to wait for Arlington to do what they wanted to do. And they backed off their study because I went to Richmond and did what I did in 2016. So I'd, I'd be interested in seeing, I agree, any data, like even com comparison to what is the historical rate in Fairfax, for example. That's a very, there's a pretty easy kind of table to put together. It's um, the same. But I'm, uh, I mean, everybody in PDA has been getting the same fee since 2006. I was the only one who was not. But now you're saying you want to raise it, right? Like, so the, That's correct, just like Prince William did it, just like Fairfax County is going to do it. I'd be interested in seeing those numbers written down, but um, I would say in the interest of time, we're, we're out of time. I, I think either way, the county is going to review this, um, so there's not a huge weight to the vote, but uh, I guess we, I would be comfortable moving to a vote unless you have, did you have anything to add on the, the rate? I do not. Discussion? I don't think you have well, last year, the police department supported that, the fee increase. Yeah, they did. That's why I'm going to vote 6 to 1 last year. That's not on the... And we weren't even able to get the case. So I, I appreciate you, Jim. It's all good. Okay. I just, are you going to call for a vote now? Uh, yes. Uh, so I guess I'm going to call for a vote. Uh, all in favor of raising the toe to to rate to 150? Say aye. Aye. Two. Two. All in favor? Um, opposed? Nay? Abstain? Or nay? I'm gonna abstain. So, two, two, two to two in, a, in an abstention. <laughs> um, and again, we, we ask for any data that, that would justify the, the raising the rate. Um, unfortunately, I had the wrong agenda in front of me. I thought we were almost just gonna skim in here under time, but we had two police uh, submitted requests. Um, Tower submitted vehicle photos um, and towing complaint point of record. Uh, I guess, Jim, was that yours, or? Who, that would be me, because uh, I'm, I'm pretty much doing this all the time at this point. Um, for the tow uh, photos that I receive in the emails, I, I don't, I'm starting to find that I, I'm getting pictures of dents and dings and people's mufflers and a car already on the um, tow truck. I don't want that, and I will no longer accept that. What I want is an actual photo of the violation of the car already still sitting in the spot. I do not want it on the back of a tow truck. I want the violation itself. So if that car is violating a sign or whatever it is, I want to see a picture of the sign. I want to see the car in that spot above the sign, next to the sign, whatever it is, and so that I can see that I'm, I'm getting, and I also would like to have I want a clear, unobstructed view of the front window. I want to see the dashboard before the car is hooked up. I want to see for no permit tows. The the dashboard, and I want to see for every tow. I want to see the dashboard. I, I want to see pictures of the sign, the violation. I want to see the dashboard and the back window, the back deck, and the back window area for the permits and. Because what I'm getting is all kinds of pictures, which to me are civil, because they're talking about, uh, you know, I, I'm getting pictures from the drivers where I, I have 10 pictures, and it's of the, nothing to do with the violation. It shows the car already up on the tow truck. It, it shows everything but what I need it, it, to do the investigations, which then makes me have to go backwards and do a whole bunch of you know, backwards investigation, which then turns into a big pain in the bum for whoever I'm talking to. And if I just had that information from the get-go, I, I realize it says take four corner pictures, but a lot of the pictures I'm getting is, is for when the guy says, oh, he wrecked my car, whatever. That has nothing to do with me, but I'm not getting a picture of the violation at all. I, I'm not. I, I'm getting... I I'll instruct my employees to do what it is that you want, but I, I, they're not going to be able to prove a false negative with like a custom parking lot, like let's say, pick like a spot like Gold's Gym, you know, taking a picture of the dashboard in the rear dashboard. I, I will not do that. Okay. I, I want those photos. I want those photos. I want to see the dashboard. 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 I want to see the I want to see the dashboard. 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 I want to see it, okay. Which would show me the violation. I, I, I'm not getting a violation. Well, the violation is, and an unauthorized parking would be what? What, what are you looking Can at? I see like the, the building the, in the background? The building, the sign. Okay. I, I don't yeah, get any of that. I just get, well, they violated that, you know, which, or they violated the the fire lane. Well, I've 
all of a sudden had to do a lot of extensive investigation into the fire, fire lane because if there's no sign posted saying it's a fire lane 75 feet apart x amount of signs and the curb is just painted yellow it's not a fire lane it's a uh, loading and unloading zone and as long as one person stays with the car they're free to park right there and you can't tow it once they walk away from the car it becomes a whole different issue but i'm getting complaints saying i wasn't in the fire lane and i'm thinking but then on the receipt it's fire lane written but there's no pictures of anything that says it's in the fire lane and i and that's a yellow curb that's a yellow curb yeah but the yellow curb trust me i have studied it pulled up the fire department stuff pulled up have you pulled up the state i i did and i pulled up what virginia teaches and they actually to get your driver's license and they actually have different color curves, which mean different color curves. Right. And yellow is not stand. Yellow can be fire lane as long as there is the, the, the fire department signs. But I'm not always getting that. I'm getting a picture of a yellow curb and no signs. So you can't tow it for a fire lane violation. That's a no-no. So, or if, if there are signs, the, the driver's not giving them to me. So to me, it's an invalid tow so every a, single day. Just a quick clarification: if the vehicle is 75 feet away from the sign, then we take. No, the, the signs have to be within 75 feet, feet of each other. Yeah. Okay, but what I'm saying is, if the car is parked 75 feet in the fire lane, 75 feet away from the sign, you're not you're not going to see the sign when my driver takes the car in the picture. But, Back. The driver needs to get the sign of the okay. The car is here, uh -huh. so take a picture of the car so I see the car, the building, uh -huh. and the sign. So I can see or stand at the back end of the car. I can't. I can't it's see. It's going to be a reflection. You realize that, right? I'm not saying take a picture of the back window at that point. No, I'm no, no. Saying, I'm saying if I take a picture of a car in a fire lane right now. Right. Okay. And the sign is. 20, 30 feet this way. Right, All but, you're going to see is a reflection of something. This right, day. but they're, they're, trust me, I'm not a photographer, but if you go stand at the side of the car and you snap a photo and you just kind of pan it, I'm, I'm not a detective, but I can figure out that that sign goes with that car, but I get nothing, excuse me, to match that. Uh, you know, I understand what I'm saying. It, at nighttime, I drive at night. So. And, I, and I get that because the, the sign the, is the reflective. The fire lane is reflective. And the problem we're having as towing companies is we need to get a detailed picture of the car in violation in the fire lane. And, and, I, and I get that. And so I can, all I you're can... honestly going to get from us, and I'm asking you if this is adequate enough, is you're going to get a reflection that looks like a sign on post. That's what you're going to get. It's going to be a blur because there's no way that we can get... And I we're not that. photographers. And, so I, and, I, and I get that. And it's all done. Is that adequate? Problems. Is that so that? And I can go at least that way because I do drive and go back to that location when I can't figure that out. Okay. What the driver was trying to say or yeah, what it is. So I don't assume anything, but you know. And you see the sign right there. In the you, you'll know that there's yeah. a sign there. I'm telling yeah. you that. Yes, you're not going to notice what it says because it's going to look like a big yes, old sign. Yes, sir. I, that, yes, sir. I, I understand There's that. a lot of garden style apartments too up and down Columbia Pike and that go down the uh, Lee Road corridor towards Old Lee that, that, were, that have yellow curb that were never required to have uh, fire lights. Uh, um, unfortunately, the right. yeah, fire department and the uh, county Trust me, I've, no. I've had a lot to do with this here. I just think that the couple that most of them never don't have. Well, then, unfortunately, then somebody needs to, if it's yellow and you want to paint fire lane on it and there's no sign, then it's a fire lane if it is yellow and it's stenciled on their fire lane. What if it's yellow and you just write it as a no loading zone or something? <laughs> I mean, How, well, however, well, the contract is, but this, yeah. I towed it out of a fire lane, isn't going to work for me. So okay. just let just it be you known. Know, unauthorized area to park yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an unauthorized park. Yeah. Sure. Do we want to set up a motion to change the language to add that the photo has to show the violation? Uh, mm -hmm. The view of the dashboard and the view of the back deck. That would only apply the, during permits, though. Well, what do you need to see a, a, a picture of the front and back dash on a car that we're towing for unauthorized parking? That's what I'm not understanding. That way, there's, understand there, the there, that way there's consistency, because if okay. I just say right. only if it's a permit or only if it's that, unfortunately, I'm not going to get that. <coughs> so if I just make it standard, I need to see the violation, okay. the back deck, so the, the front deck, and I don't really care about a muffler. No, he made the motion. 
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. we're just asking. Yeah, we're just asking. We're just asking. Yeah. I think it would be your motion to make um, yes. to include that that language. Would you like to? Yes. I, I'd like to make a motion that. Like, uh, I'll make okay. Uh, do we have anyone to second the motion to include? Did you give me a photo of the county board members? Take a picture. We'll do a whole 360. Yeah, I'll take all the pictures you want. I I second Sergeant Jones' motion. Okay. Uh, discussion. Anyone? I think so. What, we're, what the language was to include the front uh, dashboard, the back, and include clear evidence. Photos too. Yeah. Clear, clear photos. Clear. clear photos. Something that doesn't have it. Do you Obviously, know how if you take it, if you take it with your phone, <laughs> you no I do because I was a police agent. You can stand sideways. There are ways to do that. There are ways to manipulate it. However, you want to do it. So I before just, it I becomes need a clear uh, photo. before it gets to uh, the county manager, and if they don't ever look at it, I'll still try to get my. If not, it'll just be. Yeah, you think it, <laughs> The motion will be to clarify. Her actions will not be withstanding the motion. <laughs> right. I'm still trying to comply. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess we're ready for a vote on clear photos of the dashboard, the back deck, and illustration of the violation. Uh, we had a motion, we had a second. We want to do a vote? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 5 0. Okay. Uh, I apologize, everyone. We're going a little over time. But I, your your last one was uh, telling complaint point of contact. Uh, yes, I'm finding that I don't have um, it, uh, a point of contact for some. So when I get a complaint, I'm having to do extra legwork to figure out what when I call the tow company, who is um, the point of contact for that. I don't have an issue with Advance or A1, but you know. Other ones. You better not have one with me either. Uh, you know, it's uh, no point of contact. So people would just send an email and just let me know what they're in contact. So I, I think there's. A1 is. I was just say, because there's three of us that you might want to talk because Mike sets up some contracts, I set up some, James does some, so uh, we all like to talk to you. And this is point of contact at the tow company or point of contact at the, the contract that authorizing the tow part? Both. Okay. Um, there was, I believe, in, in the current code, something about uh, the records that the tow company has to maintain. Um, so this, the motion would be to uh, amend to that section the records they have to maintain and keep on file with the county, include points of contact at the, the businesses. Um, and that would the, be the contract. I mean, yeah. If she asks me for who she needs to go talk to, she's going to get the information. Is it to maintain the record on file or to um, no, so that or to maintain it on demand, get it on demand? For when I call and say I need to talk to the person that authorized the tow, I have a difficult time getting that, and I should be able to in my investigation because I actually do take the time to figure it out, um, be able to say okay, the, that apartment complex doesn't want to do that because I had it where I get a hold of somebody at the apartment complex and they say, you know, we didn't, and we didn't authorize it. So I don't know whether it's that person just doesn't know and they're just going to spit that out because they, so if I had a genuine point of contact that's, you know, this is Joe Blow Schmuckatelli and he runs that business, then I can say, Joe Blow, hey, did you guys, you know, what is the practice for this? Is this uh, somebody just spotting it or, you know, or, you know, the guy went in and got a cup of coffee from your business and then walked over and picked up his dry cleaning. You know, did you guys authorize that? And is that really what you wanted? Was it that you wanted the guy to use your business and he did that and then he took her, you know, two or three extra minutes and went to Starbucks? Does that mean that the, once he picked up his dry cleaning, threw it in the car and, and then um, walked across and got a coffee, then the person sitting in the parking lot the spot or whatever, has a car yank, is that genuine? What was meant to be? And I'm finding that's not so much. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's the frustration from the resident's perspective, right? That the, the why, you know, this issue of the contract is, is up for debate. Again, we'll, we'll table it for a future one, but for, well, but, no, for your motion, though, um, well, I was going to say we'll debate the, the resident's access to the contract, but what would language would you like to see changed? Like, would you like to, I mean, because you already have the right to request a right. co- inspect the contract. I'm not why she wouldn't have that just in the police call-in report. 
we have to give you the phone number and yeah, the name of who all through all the tests and everything. So I'm not understanding why you're having a complication. Because sometimes when you go back and you call that number, that person who authorizes a tow isn't either going to be there and you get the concierge or whoever. Well, is some of them are huge companies and they and, really and, don't want to deal I, with it. To be honest, that, that, well, that's because they don't want to deal with the police. Doesn't right. mean they can't. Right, I, I understand. Okay. But I'm, I'm telling you that the God is honest truth. Because even when I call some, call them sometimes. Because I do go up to ECC off. and say and ask them to pull it and print that out for me. I I go to great lengths before I put my name on the bottom of that piece of paper right. saying whether it was in compliance or not in compliance. Yeah. I actually take that seriously. So. I like to have as much information. <clears throat> but that, you're saying you're having a problem with even when we give the name and phone number. Sometimes, yes, actually get absolutely. The so if there was, I don't know how. To so I mean, I, I'll always give you that updated information because individual managers change all the time. I mean, I have I over, we have over 800 properties. Um, we're the authorized agent for some of the places that we work for because the managers aren't here on site. They're in New York or in uh, Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll you'll always be able to, you know, other contracts should spell it out anyway for you. But I, I'll always make sure that you have somebody. And you don't need, I mean, you can make a motion here to put it forth to the county manager to try to comply with that now without you even making a, a law. So. Well, again, you're just one of the, the towers in the industry. I feel like some of this is about the other ones that are probably less in compliance. Well, if you look at the, the numbers, Matt, there's not very many people doing a majority yeah, of the towing. So the I mean, do most of them. So, so I mean, I, I think that, you know, I mean, you can make the motion, see if the county manager will entertain it, see if they'll put it on the agenda, play ball. I, I just think that I'll, right. I'll do it because she's asking, I will do that for her now without waiting for the law to be changed, if I can. Well, is there a specific motion? Do you feel like there's language that, that could codify what you're asking, or do you think that's this kind of courtesy. more of a courtesy? More of a courtesy? Yes, sir. You have my every bit of attention to it. I promise. I think uh, yeah. Let's. I mean, I, I think that kind of frustration is is what emphasizes what we talk about in, as residents. You know, being frustrated not being able to find someone to to talk to or to complain to. Um, especially like when you hear your apartment complex saying, oh yeah, we didn't authorize that. And mm -hmm. you know, who, well, who did? Um, again, we'll table that. Uh, we're out of time. I think that finishes your, yes, sir. your discussion. You. Excellent, mm -hmm. thank you for the, for the feedback. Um, we are now at 8.15. However, we did promise to do a public discussion. So would we all entertain 60 seconds from each of our residents if they uh, have anything to say? Did yeah, you, I mean, I've voiced, you voiced your, your, your <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm part of the discussion. Um, I appreciate your help, and I wish I would have known about you a couple years ago. But I, I guess I'm just a little concerned as a resident of the very aggressive, I find it aggressive, going, you know, midnight vehicle registration. It says it's not right. However, it was online. The, the police, you know, police department or with the DMV was registered. I got towed that, you know, at midnight, basically on the dot. So I thought it was aggressive towing. I just don't understand why we need it, but I'm sure that I could learn a lot more from these discussions. And Great. Thanks, that. Matt. Can yep. I think we have one, one more, one more, 60 seconds. Uh, I mostly would just like something <coughs> to hold you clarified, so maybe I'm not holding the wrong facts. Is it true that that package that was passed in Richmond specifically allows the towing of cars with animals in them? It does. Animals, pets? Yeah, yeah, we're required by law to notify the animal, uh, local, any towing uh, yeah. partner in Planning District 8 or 16 must notify uh, the animal Animal board control. Animal, animal control within within 60 minutes of the vehicle being picked up uh, being towed instead of just leaving it there well yeah that so legislation so you used to not be able to tow with the with an animal right, so, so, so they change it just to be quick right. a, a towing entity made a contribution to one things. of our representatives yeah, in richmond uh, who went down to richmond to and right. passed that legislation notified. Is that this is, this is true. So the, the lady who was, who was responsible for the humane care of the of animals, the, that's her big, the Democrat from Fairfax, she's the one who added that piece in there. She, It was her idea to do that, not, did, did, not the towing industry, hers. Did, did anyone in the towing industry actually con give her contributions? No, not one bit. Oh, really? Not no contributions to her no. from, oh, I guess I'm wrong. And most of the people on the 
I'll, uh, I'll have to catch you up. Yeah. 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 I'll stand correct. <laughs> Um, yeah, with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, I know, yeah, I appreciate you guys for showing up. Are you? You're a... So, you did, did you want to speak? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, one of the toe guys. Yeah, like one of the toe guys. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, man. If you ever want to sit down, you know, we all set the legislation. Let's be This board used to go out and have 10 non voting members. Okay, please. I appreciate you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy Merry Christmas. Excuse to you or yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I was just watching what happened. The first two times you did the last one. Yeah, I'm just going to